celebrate his goodness, celebrate his greatness, celebrate his faithfulness to us. Oh, glory to God. That's the essence of that song that's playing, how faithful God is. All you got to do is look back over your life and you can see the hand of God, the faithfulness of God. His power present in your life. The word of the Lord says that he is present help in time of trouble and in time of need. He's present in the midst of us. Amen? And we are grateful. How many are just grateful to God? Come on, we ain't got to wait till Thursday to give it up to him. You ain't got to wait till Thursday, amen? When you look back over your life and you see what the Lord has done. Uh, the song says, when I think of his goodness, when I think of all that he's done for me, my soul, God, uh, my soul cries.
Because you have yet to see the goodness yeah. of God. Where? In the land of the living. Yeah. In the place where others are struggling. Mm. God's hand is on you. Mm. God's hand is on your life. Go to 1 Thessalonians 5. Let me deal with this right quick. Then I'll move. 1 Thessalonians 5. Should be a familiar passage to us. And appropriate for the season. 1 Thessalonians 5. Look at verse 14. 1 Thessalonians 5. Begin to get verse 14. It says, Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak, and be patient toward all men. Tall order. See, verse 15, that none render evil for evil unto any man. But ever follow that which is good both among yourselves and to all men. Rejoice evermore. There's that word again. Pray without ceasing. And then what? In everything. Give thanks. In Everything, no matter the circumstance, situation, state of mind, state of being, guess what God expects of you? To be thankful. Woo! Be thankful. In everything, give thanks. Now, here's the part in this verse we don't want to miss. Read that next part of that. In everything, give thanks. Why? Wait a minute. Let's hold up right there. This is what? So if you're struggling with the will of God, it's just got revealed to you. One aspect or form of the will of God is for you to always be what? Simple as that. So now you gotta ask, you gotta, you gotta assess yourself. Are you in the will of God or not? Because if you ain't right now, everybody say yes right quick. So hold on, hold on. Please. <laughs> we were, we were, that was good. But to know whether or not I'm in the will of God, the word was everything. Now ask yourself, are you in the will of God? Because in every situation that presents itself or has presented itself, were you thankful? Oh. Because see, some stuff happened you didn't like. Some folks said some stuff you didn't like. But was, what came out first, thank you or something else? <laughs> well, here's where we are. In everything, give thanks because this is the will of God. Watch this. In Christ Jesus concerning, get that word, who? You. It's important for you. If you're going to operate in the will of God, that no matter what's going on, you have a thankful attitude. That's right. All right. That you are grateful. Amen. Mm. That's, good. That's a word, isn't it? Yeah. This is the will of God, that in everything you be thankful, regardless to others' opinions, others' heart, state of mind. The mandate of God is that you. Why you? Because of what he's already done for you. Yes. Why you? Because he's already brought you out of darkness into the marvelous light. Why you? Because he's already proved himself to you in time's past. Why you? Because he's yet blessing you right now in spite of you. He's blessing you in spite of your enemy. He's blessing you in spite of. Watch this. Watch this. Not because of, but in spite of. Watch this. You missed it, but he still blessed you. You didn't do your part, but he. Huh? You gave up in the fight, and he still. You failed to obey the last command. You said what you shouldn't have said. Did what you shouldn't have done. But you still here. It is the will of God. 
Here's what Paul said, I've learned to be content. He said, whether I'm abased or abound. See, contentment, now remember we got into this the other week about grace and confidence, but watch this, contentment will allow you to be thankful. But if you're discontent, you'll murmur, you'll complain, you'll have an opinion. But when you're content, Paul says, I, listen, Paul says, I've learned he'll live to be content. If I got it, it's God. If I ain't got it, it still got to be God. Job found that out. How did Job find that out? Job said, the Lord give it. Well, ain't nobody able to take it back but him. Y'all missed out. Here. Ain't nobody able to take it back. If the Lord gave it and his seal is on it, can't nobody break his seal but himself. There ain't no enemy strong enough. Thank you. And if God took it, maybe it's because you wouldn't let it go. Sometimes you got to let go to get more. That's transition. Sometimes you got to leave where you are to go here or to be there. The Bible said we go from faith to faith and glory to glory. You got to leave an old mindset to go to a new mindset. The Bible said if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. You got to leave the old way. You got to leave the old man. Take off the old man. Put off the old man. Put on the what? The new man. But if you're not willing to change, you ain't willing to transition. If you don't transition, how are you going to get in position? God's trying to take you to more. He's trying to take you to better. Watch this. Be in this series now. Overthrow the overflow. If God's fighting your enemy so you can move, but you refuse to move and stand still. Come on. It can't work. Go to Ephesians 5. The worst thing we can be is our own hindrance. That's right. Amen. The worst things we can do is take a verse like this and, a lot, and miss it and, and expect God to do something that he don't have to do. That's right. Because we ain't learned how to be grateful. Amen. We ain't learned how to be content. Ephesians 5. Let's look at uh, verse 8. Ephesians 5. We'll look at verse 8. But verse 1 starts off about be ye followers of God as dear children. Learn how to be followers of God. Okay? Look what he says in verse 8. For ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. So walk as children of the light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. Proving what is acceptable unto God. What's acceptable? Thanksgiving. What's acceptable? Being grateful. What's acceptable? Always acknowledging God. The Bible says acknowledging every good thing that's in you. In Christ Jesus. Look what it says. Proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness... But rather, what? Reprove them. See, the unfruitful work of darkness, here we talk about thanksgiving, is to be unthankful. It's to be unthankful, ungrateful. Hold your finger right there. Go to Timothy. And look at uh, 2 Timothy 3. Oh, you thinking that because I'm going back. 2 Timothy 3. Look what it says. This know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come. That's true right now. We're seeing it. Look what's going to happen. Men are going to become lovers of their own selves. We're seeing that. They're going to be covetous. We see that. They're going to be boasters and proud. We see that. Then they're going to blaspheme. Got that going on too. Disobedient to parents. Some of y'all parents can attest to that. Then what else we got? Look what the next word is. Line on line, precept on precept. 
Ain't the notes for the day, but it's what God won't deal with. You see what I'm saying? The unfruitful works is when you know, remember what Romans 1 says, how we hold the truth in unrighteousness. We know what God wants, we just refuse to give it to him. God said, I need you to be thankful, and not because it's a season. I need you to be thankful because there's a reason. Yes, yes, yes. Hmm? yes. There's a reason always in your life to be thankful. All you got to do is look at it. Yes, yes. Huh? Look what God has done. So look what's happening. Now, they're unthankful. Now, watch this. Watch this. When you start to be unthankful, what's the next thing? Hmm? Lack of thanksgiving can shift you in a negative transition rather than walking in holiness, you start to walk in unholiness. Then the book in it. Then look at verse 3. Without, I mean, it just gets worse from here. This, this, Let's just beat it like that. I ain't going through all these words. You catch the picture. It just gets worse from here. When you start being thankful and grateful for what God has done, it just go down here. You just get lost in yourself. Now you're doing anything and everything. Now you've left God out. Ooh. And then look at verse 5. What's happening now? Now you've got a form of God. But ain't no power no more. You ritualistic. You religious. You just come to church because it's Sunday. What about coming because God's been good to me? What about coming because I want to grow in God? What about coming because I want to know more of God? I want to get closer to God. See, we in a remnant aspect right now. Only the remnant is here. Mm -hmm. yes, Only the remnant is still hearing the voice. Yes, yes, the Bible says, well, the voice of a king or the word of a king is there's power. Power will want to be connected to power, but you know that the source of all power is God. Amen. The source of all change is God. It's a sad commentary. Many come but don't want to change. Many come, but don't want to change. Well, what's the purpose in coming if you didn't come to change? What's the purpose in coming if you didn't want the word of God to, to, to divide and cut asunder? Okay, let's go to Romans. Hold that to Ephesians. Somebody remember where I'm at now. I might just forget here in a minute. See, it's important for us that we start to operate this thing like God wants us to operate it. Not in and of ourselves, but according to what the will of God is and the purpose and plan of God is. It's imperative that we walk in the light and not be confound or confused as to what God's will is. Go with me to Romans 12. Familiar passage. Watch this. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, present your bodies of living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto the Lord, which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye what? How? By the renewing of your mind. Look at this. I'm trying to get you a point. So you can prove what the will of God is. God's word is going to help you prove his will. But now once the proof is in, what are you going to do? Hmm? See, confirmation, being conformed, not being conformed to this world will bring about the transformation. But the transformation begins with the renewing. But if you don't change your mind, you're never going to know what the will of God is. The Bible says the good and what? Perfect. Perfect will of God. So men have just operated on what they can operate on without knowing what's really God's will. 
Well, that's one of the things we show you this morning. It's the will of God for you to always be thankful. That's it. Hmm? Well, Pastor, you don't understand what I'm going through. Listen, if God don't know what you're going through, hmm? God know what you're going through and still told you. Now, are you following? The God that created you, that know your seasons, your time, everything, is the same one that just sit here and said, be thankful. Okay, go to James. All them other places where I was. Go to James, first chapter. Look what he says. My brethren, James 1, verse 2. My brethren, do what? We. See, we, we read it, but we don't read it. Brethren, count it all joy. Or another way we can say it, be thankful. Still be happy, though things ain't like you want it to be. My, my brother, count it all joy when you. Because everybody don't fall in at the same time. Now there are times there may be a corporate issue, but typically it's going to be an individual issue before there's a corporate issue. But whenever it happens, ain't no if it happens, when it happens, that's what the Bible says. What should be your state? You're supposed to be rejoicing. Now that just don't sound, and, and, and humanistic, oh, that just don't make sense, do it? It does if you already know the outcome. Y'all missed out. It does when you already know the outcome. What did you say? Because we've already told you God's overthrowing the overflow. God said, I'm going to deal with your enemy. Yes. The battle is never yours. It's God. But you need a proper frame and state of mind to know that when you're going through, God's got you on the other end of it. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Knowing this. Look what it's, okay, let me help. Let me slow myself down. Okay. We're to count it all joy. When we fall into time, it's temptation. Watch this. How is that done? Um, the scripture bad enough. The Bible says, what, what does verse 3 say? Knowing, knowing this. Uh -huh. I can do it because of what I know. Yes. I can be joyful in the situation because of what I know. So the question is, how much do you know? The question is, do you know enough about your God? Do you know enough about who you are in God? Come on, come on now, come on. This big boy school here, okay? This is the know. This is how it's done. This is why God can tell you to do this. He said, because of what you know. The Bible says, they that know their God shall be bold and be strong and do great extra when you know your God. See, see, you can't just be around here quoting Isaiah 54, 17. Yes, yes. And don't expect the manifestation of it to happen. Amen. See, this is why you got to know him. That's why we said your testimonies can be your counselors. <laughs> see, it ain't a bad thing to look back over your life and see the victories. The Bible said, what that song said, count your blessings. Name them one by one. Sometimes, if you don't want to do it mentally, you just need to write it down. Right. Do you have a journal of your journey? Do you have a journal of your journey in God and all that he has done? Because the same, he's the same God. So look at this. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith, which is what you believe, I talked this Wednesday night about the good fight of faith. Uh, Wednesday night's title, because we didn't get a chance to, to record it, but Wednesday night's title was, Do You Have a Will to Win? 
Do you have a will to win? Because when you got a will to win, there's certain things you do differently. What did Paul say? I fought a good fight. I kept the faith. Everything came at me to make me turn loose what I believe. Remember when the woman, when the man was coming to Jesus, told him, listen, you know, I already asked me to do it. I told you I'm going to do it. Don't be bothered by what these folks tell me. See, you got to be careful. When you when you on the hook to believe God for a miracle, you got to be mindful of what other folks are saying. Yes, yes, yes. Don't let somebody else talk you out of what God said. Yes, Lord. Don't let the enemies fight, talk you, or turn you from what God said. Right. Look what he said. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith work in what? Patience. But let patience have a perfect why? Why? Look at that. Read that real good. Don't be scared. Read it now. Read it out loud. Y'all scared to read. Y'all scared to read the scripture. You see, and I understand. I understand. I'm going to work with you right quick. Hold on. I just lost my page. He said, listen, sometimes you're scared to read the scripture because of the demand it puts on you. So I'm going to help you. I'm going to help you. It says, knowing this, that the trying of your faith work with patience. But you got to let patience have a perfect work. And here's the part you don't want to miss. That you may be perfect and tired and wanting nothing. Continue. At the end of this thing, God said, you ain't going to lack nothing. But you got a place in the equation. Uh -huh. okay. Thank you, Lord. Your place is to maintain what you know. Yeah. 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 Your place is to not give up forfeit or denounce what you know. Yeah. 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 All right, put your finger there. Let's go to Peter. <laughs> I might come back there too, so hold out. I said, Pastor, I'll be glad when you figure out where you're going. <laughs> well, hold on, well, we might not at this point. We just don't get there. All right, go to First Peter. Your time all day together. You're you going to help me remember. Look at First Peter. Verse 3. Bless be, First Peter, verse 3. Bless be God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope. You had lost your hope. Your hope was dead. Well, what is hope if it's not expectation? He had begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Now look at this. To an inheritance. Y'all see that case? If Jesus had not died, you would not have an inheritance. His death brought forth your inheritance. Y'all ain't catching it. What's in my inheritance? Father's victory. Yeah. Yeah. What's in my inheritance? Everything I need. Yes, God. What's in my inheritance? Peace and joy. Yeah. What's in my inheritance? The ability to be thankful regardless. Yeah. <laughs> you ought to just be thankful even when you're on the cross. You ought to be thankful that nobody pierce you in your side. To an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled that faded not away, reserved in heaven for who? Are you, are you starting to notice a lot of these verses we hear today, they say you. God's personalizing your transition. He personalizing it. You got to do this because you're going to receive it. Look at this. Who are kept by the power of God through faith. How does God keep you so you can get your inheritance? Through faith. That's why your fight is for your faith. That's why you can't let your faith go. Come on, y'all. Faith, let me say it alone. Faith is going to be your key to access. Your faith is how you're going to let yourself into it. Then it's reading. 
who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Days like today. Watch this here. Where in these great length, that word is what? Though now for a if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptation. So some might be coming at you. But God got you. Thank you, Lord. Yes, God. Some's coming at you, but God said, listen, you can be thankful, you can be content, you can be great, because your inheritance is secure. Hold on to your faith. Yes, God. Thank you. Y'all yeah, come on. But, okay, look at verse 7. Look at verse 7. I just came out of James. I came all the way out of James and go to 7. Okay? That the trial of your faith. See how y'all put it line on line through seven open. Only God can preach his own word. I'm yeah. telling you. Yeah. Okay? That the trial of your faith. He just told you, James, you count out there, but you're going to be going through something. Your faith is on trial. Yeah. That the trial of your faith be more precious than gold. Wait a minute. What you believe is more than what used to be in Fort Knox, because I don't even think it's in Fort Knox. That's a whole other subject. <laughs> I don't only think we got it at all in the country right now. But listen, listen. He says what you believe has a greater value than gold. Now, right there, right there. Now maybe you understand why the thief is trying to break in on you. Because the enemy says, if I can rob you of your faith, I just took gold from you. There ain't no good thief gonna break in for nothing. Right. Right. You ever just sit down and thought about in the natural, why would the enemy want to mess with me? What I got? Of course he is. Yes, I do have. I have what he can't stand. The power to break him down. The power to believe in God over him. Yeah, uh -huh. yes. right, 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 right. Uh -huh. Come on, come on. Yes. The power to stand against all his wiles and strategies. Oh, oh he got to take that. Oh, Bible, Mark, what he said. When the sword souls work, who comes to get it? Why the enemy come? Because he knows it's gold. Right, right. Now here's the sad commentary. He knows his gold. God knows his gold. Only somebody struggling with the gold left. The gold of it is you and me. Hmm? So what am I doing when I come in here? I'm getting my gold. I'm polishing my gold. I'm shining up my gold. Huh? You ever seen somebody got some money? They just sit there and just count these stacks. They ain't, got, they ain't going nowhere. Just sit there and just count. Just blooming on it like that. <laughs> you ever seen somebody like that? They just sit there and just play with it. Well, a person with gold is going to just sit there and shine it up. It's polishing. Come on, y'all. The enemy wants to take your gift from you. That the trial of your faith be more precious than gold that perishes. Though it be tried with fire, might be found unto the praise, honor, and glory at the appearing of Jesus. Listen, when God show up, look what God looking for. Your gold. Come on, many times God was saying, when I come back, shall I find such faith? Uh -huh. The centurion said, listen, and I know you're a man of authority. I understand it. I'm up on the post. I understand Father and Ruth. Send your word. Right. God said, now, when I come back, will I find such faith? Listen, he ain't rolling with us. Uh -huh. But he understands. How is it that folks that ain't even in your company understand your God better than you do? Huh? Don't let outsiders know more about God and the power of God and the will of God for you than you do. You in church every week. Look what he said. Whom having not seen, verse 8, ye love. In whom though now ye see him not, look at this, hear your word, yet Can you believe 
God even though you don't see God? I know that's the struggle with Adam Thomas. I ain't going to believe till I see. God said, blessed is the man that believeth and seeth. It's your belief that's going to produce what you want to see. That's right. Amen. Hebrews 11, 1. Now faith is the substance, or watch this, let's flip it, the confidence. Yeah. You got to be confident God's going to do it. You got to be confident. We talked to you that the other week, 1 John 5, 14. And this is the confidence we have in here. Watch this. That God has anything according to his will. So watch this. Even if you're praying and asking, but you ain't thankful for what you're asking, you still miss it. You still missed it. Because part of the will of God is to be thankful. God, I'm so grateful you're going to do this. And the reason I know you're going to do it because I know what you've already done. It's in the book. You said put you in remembrance of your word. Come on, y'all. Watch this here. Watch this. He ain't through. Who have not seen ye love, and who though now you see him not yet believing. Look at this. Yet believing will cause me to what? Come. Yet believing, yet holding on to the word will cause you to rejoice or have joy. And look what he goes on to say. Rejoice with joy unspeakable. Instead of saying full of the glory, let me translate it this way. Full of the presence of God. Because you're so full of God, you can rejoice. You might even be so rejoicing to the point you can't even open your mouth and say a word. But the old fool say, I can't say a word, but I just wave my hand. And that ain't so wrong. That's a habit. Because God's about to move from there for you. Look what it says now. Watch this here. Look what it is in verse 9. Receiving the end of Well, what does it mean to receive? Y'all, everybody just froze like right there. Like, do you really want me to answer that? Yeah. Yeah, I do. What does it mean to receive? Hmm? Talk to him. It's all good. Speak out. To be thankful, yeah. But what is it literally for me to receive something? To possess it. Huh? To possess it. To have it in hand. Look what the scripture says. You're going to receive the end of your faith, but your faith is what you believe for. So what you're going to do is have in hand the thing you believe for. Because at first it was just a promise. Y'all didn't catch this. It was a promise that's now reality. But some stuff came along the way while I was yet believing. Some stuff happened. Some folks said some stuff. The enemy did some stuff, but because I didn't change, now I'm holding in hand the end of what I spoke. Come on, y'all, read your Bible now. It's, listen, listen, it's not right the time. We just got to follow. Receiving the end of your faith, even salvation of your soul. Man, your soul's at stake in what you believe. Hmm? One of the things that they ran on, the, on this thing was about the soul of the nation. They ain't understand what they said. They ain't understand. Sounded good. Sounded scriptural. Sounded biblical. But yet without understanding. <laughs> because the soul of it is to come back to God. The soul of it is to come back to God or to the foundations of God to be a Bible-believing nation. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. So to say the soul of the nation is to put God back in and everything you took God out of. You 
see it happen yet? Okay, let's keep on reading. Of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently, who prophesied of the grace that should come, searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ which was in them did signify when it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should be real. Unto whom it was revealed that not unto themselves but unto us they did minister the things which are now reported unto you by them which have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven which things angels desire to look into. Angels are still trying to, angels that work for God are still trying to understand how God is moving in this operation towards you. That's how much you are loved by God. That's how much God is going to back to you. Go to Psalm 16. Man, I'm going to beat your time this week. Glory to God. Psalms 18. Y'all have been praying for me. Don't say that. Don't say that. Psalms 18. Psalms 18. Without reading all of it. But I want to show you something. I'll read some of this start first part of it. It says, look at this. I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. Mm -hmm. See, listen, listen. When you know God, yeah. Yeah. you know who your strength is. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. I don't have a misplaced love. My love is for God. Yeah. Yeah. He is my strength and my source. The Lord is my rock and my fortress, my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I will trust, my buckler and the horn of my salvation, my high time. Yes. Sounds like somebody that didn't experience victory. Yes. Now, see, that's a different talk you got when you get victorious. <laughs> I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved. Come on, y'all. I'm going to be saved from my enemy. See, this too is the will of God. That I be saved. Not just that I have new birth. Come on, y'all. But that I be saved from my The sorrow of death compassed me, and the floods of ungodly men made me afraid. The songs of hell compassed me about, the snares of death prevented me. But in my distress, hear what David said. If you really want to understand how David became the one that had a heart after God, listen to it. He said, man, death came upon me. Distress all around me. Enemies on every side. But I learned something. Don't do something new in a fight. Do what you've always done that work. Call on God. Call on. Look what he said. I will call upon the Lord who's worthy to be praised. And so shall I be saved from my enemies. So what he's telling you here is his plan of offense. When the enemy comes in, what do you do? Call on God. When trials and temptations and circumstances come at your life, call on God. Yes, God. Why am I calling on God? Because I know. Yes. I know what He'll do to my enemy. Yes. I know. I know what He'll do because I've seen Him do it. Yes, God. So look what He says. In my distress, I called upon the Lord and I cried unto my God. Look at this. You see that word mine? Now? He got personal with it. He personalized it. Listen now. He hunted by the God of Jacob, the God of God. He said, that, my God. Yeah. Yeah. I called upon the Lord and cried unto my God. He heard my voice out of his yeah. temple. And my cry came before him even into his ears. Y'all still ain't kidding. Look at the confidence that you said. I know I got an audience with God. I know I got an audience. I know my prayer ain't going to the ceiling bouncing back. Some folks pray like 
you want the ball. Just hit the seed. No, 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 no. This has got to go through the seed. Through the roof. Into the heavens. You know, to be true, look what happened to Daniel when Daniel prayed. I said, I heard you the first day. But look, because I heard you, an enemy came. A 21 day fight in the heaven because you prayed. Man, that's a bad boy. Huh? You know you bad. When you pray and the enemy attacks, come on now. See, y'all y'all missed it. That's, see, I'm trying to help you. That means you need a prayer life. How do you know when you got a successful prayer life? There's an attack. There's an attack. But if ain't nobody attacking you, come on, y'all. If the enemy ain't fighting it, it ain't got any worth to it. But if the enemy is fighting it, it's manifestation, God's up to something. Look what he says. In my distress, I call. God heard you. Then the earth shook in trouble. The foundations also of the hills were moving, were shaking because he was wrought. Y'all ain't catching this. Listen, God get mad when the enemy messes with you. God don't like nobody mess with you. Like you don't like nobody mess with y'all. You know how you know how you get. But you don't expect God to get like that. God said, "Hold up now." A lot of things you can mess with, but not that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Listen. Then went up smoke. Then went up smoke, a uh, smoke out of his nostrils and fire out of his mouth. Devoured with coals were kindled by it. He bowed the heavens also and came down. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And darkness was under his feet, cause he light. See, all you got to do is get God on the scene. Yes, yes, yes. And everything the enemy is doing automatically comes under this. Thank you, Lord. See, I'm telling you, but see, watch this here. This is when you know God. Watch this here. So watch this. I'm not praying because I ain't got nothing else to do. I'm praying because I need the light to come. I'm praying because I need a suppression of what the enemy is doing. Yeah. I need God on the scene. Yes, I don't need to handle this by myself. He made darkness his secret place. His pavilion around about him were dark waters and thick clouds of sky. At the brightness that was before him, his thick cloud passed hail, stones, and coals of fire. I taught you one, I taught you Wednesday night when we Bible talks about how the Lord will fight for you. One of the ways God will fight for you, He'll drop rocks out of the heavens. God will drop a rock on your head. Ooh. Huh? That's how much you mean to him. The Lord also thundered in the heavens, and the highest gave his voice, his hails and coals of fire. He'll honor his voice. Yea, he sent out his arrows and scattered them. So look at this. Now arrows are coming. And he shot out lightnings and discomfited them. See, your enemy should never be comfortable pursuing you. Your enemy should never be comfortable in pursuit of you. Should never happen. Hmm? Okay, let me see it another one. He should never feel comfortable sitting in your lounge. Let me see it another one. He should never be at your house the past three days. My phone gave me more witness than what y'all did. Huh? He should never be that comfortable. If praise and worship and prayer is going forth in your house, yeah. ain't no. Man, I heard a, a message some years ago, years ago. 
How to fireproof your house. Is your house fireproof? Is the flame of God burning so strong in your house that the devil scared to come down your block? Let me get to this. Then the channels of water were seen, and the foundation of the world was discovered at the rebuke of the Lord, at the blast of his breath of thy nostrils. He sent from above. He took me. He drew me out of many waters. Man, you were drowned. Had not the Lord revealed himself. Sinking in dead. Anybody been there before? Y'all don't want to testify. Don't want to testify. Drowning in debt. Check came and check already gone. You didn't even see it. Y'all don't want to talk. Okay. Y'all don't want to talk. But God can get you out of that. Yes, huh? Come on here, testify. He did. He will. He can. Thank you, Lord. Look what he said. He delivered me. Now here's the verse. I went all the way to this, to this one verse. He delivered me. Look at this. And you need to underline this. He delivered me from my strong end. Yeah. That thing you thought you couldn't get from under. God said with me you can. Yeah. That thing you thought would never break in your life. Uh, that curse that they told you was never going to be broken. The devil is alive. He delivered me from my strong enemy and from them which hated me, for they were too strong for me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. What's the word behind that? When you've done all the stand, stand. Just stay still and wait on God. Wait on God. He coming. This about this. You've exhausted yourself. Stand still. Just stand. Just stay right there. Get flat footed and stand. I ain't going nowhere. Because God's about to show up in this day. It's too much for me, but just right for God. Huh? This one don't want to move. This one don't want to go. This one don't want to submit to the will of God. Let me tell you something. Either it submits or dies. God will deliver you from your strongest enemy. Look what he said. He said, they were too strong for me. He said, this enemy had a hatred for me, and I don't know why. You ever had somebody that, that just didn't like you, and you don't know why? I, I just never did that to you. Sometimes folks just demon and devil sin against you. But that's all right. They think they're coming after you. But it's God they will meet. Huh? It's God they will meet. What did he tell again? Tell sir. Say, look on the mountain, brother. You don't understand. Look at all the angels up there. Don't think you heal by yourself. Don't think you heal without help. God is your help. Yes, he is. Thank you, He is your strong type. He is your deliverer. All right, let's close out. I've got to close. Second Corinthians. Got to close. Got to close. Second Corinthians 15. And you need to underline this one. I shared it with you last week. Goes again this week. Simply because. I mean, first Corinthians. Simply because this is where you are. First Corinthians. And I think we studied it even in, in Bible study this week. But when you start to understand and know God and know the why, not only know the why, but know the how, that's where wisdom comes in. That's why the Bible says wisdom is the principal thing. But in all you're getting, you got to get an understanding. See, it ain't enough to know God, you got to know how God moves. Some folks only know God by his ass. <coughs> Moses knew God. And when you know God, you know God and his ways. Come on. Look what he says. Uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 25. O oh, death, where is thy sting? O oh, grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin. Did not God deal with sin? Did he not send Jesus? Okay. The sting of death is sin. And the strength of sin is what? The law. 
But look what he said. But thanks be unto God, which gives who the victory? He gives us the victory. How? Through Jesus. If victory comes through Jesus, does not it behoove you to know him? Don't just casually quote it as a Sunday school quote that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. He's the way, the truth, and the life because he's your example. He's your mentor. He's your revealer of truth. The Bible said they have no temptation taken you, but as such as it coming to man. But with the temptations, I said, I make the way of escape. Come on. I got to quit. Listen, what does that verse mean? God said, I won't have to get rid of it to deliver you. I can deliver you in it. Y'all still ain't, y'all ain't going to walk this morning. I can deliver you in it. What a psalm say? He prepares a table before you where? Sometimes God don't even eliminate it before he shows them he, how he's going to bless you. <laughs> Job, before you can get the double portion, pray for him because I want them to see you in action. For them to even be saved, and that just simply for me throwing down on them, guess what? I need you to pray for them. Amen. Amen. Y'all didn't catch that, did you? Yeah. Sometimes before you can get what you need, you got to deal with your enemy through prayer. That's right. That's it. Hmm? Yeah. You got to ask the mercy of God on your enemies. But well, didn't he not say pray for them that despite you? Yeah. Come on, y'all. Put it all together. This is how awesome your God is. Yeah. Wow. Because he said if there's an opportunity for them to be saved, I want them to be saved. But if not, it'll never be because they didn't have opportunity. Hmm? But they will repent for messing with you. They will repent for touching you. Okay, last verse, I'm going for real. Touch not thine own. Yeah. Okay, let me go. I got, I, I'm sorry, Andrew, I've got to wear this one out for just a few <laughs> seconds. If y'all would just give me a few seconds. Thank Why are you around here hollering about you so anointed? But <laughs> hmm? Anointed folks got a different demeanor. Anointed folks got a hammer anointed. Can't touch this. All right, I got to go. Huh? You can't touch this and survive. You can't touch this and live. And that ain't being arrogant. It ain't being boastful. It's just understanding who I am. Yes. It's understanding that God will not let it happen. Let me pray for you.